How long have you been an agent? 10 years. I'm in LA. What did you do before that? I was for 20 years a filmmaker, a director, producer, and worked myself into the ground. I quit yeah. 28 hour days. <laughs> yeah. I made my feature film at the end, which traveled to 40 international film festivals and won a lot of awards. Cool. But I was just completely exhausted, had two burnouts at the end. <laughs> And I loved it. It was my total passion. I, I made a living off it for 20 years. After I finished the festival circuit, I landed in LA and a friend picked me up and she said, I'm done working here at this airport. I'm going into real estate. And I'm like, oh, real estate, that just feels exactly right. And I went home and three months later, I had my license. From the start, I wasn't, I knew I wasn't going to call the call. Mm -hmm. Because the reason, one of the big reasons I left the film business where I had my own, run my own company and I was just very much on my own all day long on my own. I was craving human connection. I was craving to go out there and meet people and have conversations and build relationships. And so cold calling wasn't going to be my thing. I just went to a ton of networking events. But I was single, I had no kid, I could just go to all these things and meet people. And Kelly Williams would tell us like, okay, you have, you have to meet or make 500 contacts to close one deal. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen with me. And I would go to these events and every, almost every single time I'd come home with one client or two clients and close them pretty fast. So I never had to make a database with 500, 600 people. I never had a database because I really go the extra mile for my clients. And I mean that in any way you can think of in terms of service, in terms of how far I drive. I don't care if they're in San Diego. I don't care if that client wants to go to San Luis Obispo. I'll get in the car and I go there and I do my research. And then I had my, my child. I'm a single mom by choice. And, and then <laughs> even when the COVID crap stopped, I, now I'm no longer able to go out and network. Okay. Now it's, I can do the evening things. I, I can now do four mornings. Mm -hmm. Because you have a baby. Because I have a little one. He's three. Yeah, how years, old? Three years. But, but what, what you're saying is it's hard to go out and do networking events because you have a three-year-old. Yeah. Is that, okay. Yeah. Can I give you some hope just in this one little part so far? So in my lifetime, 21 years of being a professional networker, well over 7,000 coffee meetings. I know, I heard. Yeah. But in the last four years, I don't know the number. I haven't been tracking it. It's in the many hundreds of what you and I are doing right now. Hundreds and hundreds. In four years, it's got to be, even at three a week, that's 600. So the hope is you could, you don't have to leave the network. You can network just the way we're doing it right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The uh, question is then just how do you meet the people? Because mm -hmm. I would meet them naturally. I would bump into them. Mm -hmm. and, and, yep. and Yeah. You're going to so have to use I, I am just now trying to figure out, are there other ways finding new clients and creating? Yeah, that's why we speak with each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I don't know, because I don't know you well enough yet, if you're technology, you're opposed to technology, you, or you don't know how to use it, or you just don't want to use it, but you're going to need technology to find people, you're going to need technology to reach out to people, and you're going to need technology to follow up and keep them in a database that you don't have, you might want to look into some of that. I am not here to tell you what to do. I'm just going to give you ideas from a guy who 7,000 coffee meetings. My wife's closed as of yesterday, I think 1,007 real estate transactions without ever cold calling, door knocking, or paying a dime for leads, coffee meetings. Yeah. In the last four years, we do 90% of our coffee meetings. You're looking at it. But also when my wife has an available, we, we only do land. And the land we do is in Paris, which is near you, mm -hmm. in the Salton Sea, in Lancaster and Palmdale, I've made multi-millions of dollars in those four cities personally. Mm -hmm. Sold a thousand and five parcels of land in those four cities. Mm -hmm. I'm 400 miles away. I own 12 parcels down there. Six or seven of them I've never seen. It's freaking dirt. But when we get an available parcel from the owner of my wife's company, we email that out. We sell four out of six properties just by sending an email to the database. 
a couple more questions and I, I have a pretty good idea of ideas to give you. So right now, the last six months, what, whether successful or not, what efforts have you done to try to find the clients? Not incredibly much because I told you I was sidetracked the last two years massively. I did, I made some Facebook posts. I did some luxury sales. So I got into the earned in luxury agent category or network. I don't know what you want to call it. So I made that public on Facebook. I'm here to teach you how to make sales and make money without spending money. Yeah. Uh, I'm in a financial position where $14,000 websites being built. But I'm in a financial position for that. I don't think people should be doing that until they're making quite a bit of money. You don't need to door knock, cold call, or spend a dime other than to buy Zoom and a webcam and a microphone, which you probably can't even see. But if you really want to do this, you want to have a good... Though you sound fine, but I'm a, I do this for a living, so I've got the professional stuff. Short of that, you could be doing Zooms on a phone, on a telephone, if you had on a cell phone, if you had to. I don't recommend yeah. it, but you could or on an iPad. When you heard, when you read whatever post I put up in whatever group we're in, I'm in a lot of groups and my, my, my goal in life is just to teach people, don't talk to your sphere and don't cold call. And Both of that. <laughs> people go, oh, that's all I do. Cool. <laughs> a, 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 19, a 1908 Model T will still get you around town. It doesn't mean you should drive it. Mm -hmm. I um, agree. <laughs> so what do you feel you need help with? I'm searching for more effective ways of clients coming to me and not me running after clients. Pretty much that sums it up. Yeah. And in any price range, nothing is too below me and nothing is too high up there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work on that answer and I'll explain why. And I'm, I am now specialized mostly in, in single family homes. Or like multi-units up to four or things like that. That's what, what I'm most at home with. Okay, give me the price range on the single family. Oh, anything between in LA, you don't find anything below 400,000, <laughs> maybe a condo. So 400,000 uh, 400, to 2 million? No, no, I've sold way higher. Make 20 million. I don't care. There, There's no ceiling up there. I've been searching properties for someone that wanted a 60 million property. I've sold $5 million properties. Yeah. There's no ceiling for me. Okay. And the average house in LA is a million and a half and up these days. That's really an average house. I can see one part where I can explode your business and I'll explain. Okay. But I'm going to prove it to myself by asking you a few more questions. Go ahead. <laughs> your, prefer your preference would be working. If you worked with a hundred people, What's the percentage of men to women that you prefer to work with? Doesn't matter. I just, my percentage is more like our, I'm looking for clients that are kind human beings, good to work with, have the finances to, to pull through the transactions. Mm -hmm. and, and then I don't care whether those <clears throat> are males or males. What kind of circumstances are they in? That you prefer first time home buyer, empty nester, the inherited inv investor? To me, it doesn't matter. I work with anyone. I've worked with first time home buyers and I've worked with investors that have been buying and buying and buying. I know you're trying to niche it down, but I've really worked with anyone. Moment uh, last year, a couple of people would have liked to downgrade. Uh -huh. But they can't afford it because of the interest rate. They're going to pay more for a smaller house than they're paying now for a bigger house. So yeah. it really doesn't matter. For me, it more matters like that the, the people are um, nice people. The heart on the right spot and good to work with, responsive, have great communication skills. Or just I hate nothing more than a client that doesn't return phone calls or mm -hmm. texts or emails. And in general, I've been really blessed with very responsive clients. And then it's fun for me. And then I love doing it. And so, yeah, yeah. I know it's not very specific, is it? <laughs> that well, applies exactly. to a lot of categories. <laughs> yeah, we all do. I see the two. I don't know how to say this where I can get you to hear this without keep saying anyone or anybody. The two biggest things by far that I see that are holding you back is no database and the lack of specificity. And I'm gonna explain. 
Okay. Every real estate agent I've trained in is thousands. What's a good client for you? Anybody who needs a home, anybody who's nice, anybody who follows up, any everyone needs a home will get you nothing. The more vague and broad your answer, the less you're going to get. You've yeah. done well. I, I have to say, I've done well. I just got really sidetracked. Karina, if you think that's going to work, then I can't coach you. Then we can just okay. end the webinar now. I'm, I'm letting you know <laughs> this is a flaw that if okay. I can't fix, I can't help you. All right, go for it. Okay, I want you to listen. All right. Okay, let me go. Okay. In the world of getting referrals and firing the reticular activating system and the brain stem of the people you meet, I met a dentist. He goes, anybody who has teeth in networking, vague, gets nothing. Karina, I know you've gotten business, but I want you to understand a 1917 Model T runs. Okay. <laughs> but a brand new F-150 Lightning runs better. Okay, I want to tell you one thing. I tried to specialize into divorce real estate. Okay. I did all the classes. I did a web page. I went to so many networking groups that dealt with divorce, and it got me absolutely zero. Yeah. Nothing, nada. So I dropped that specifically. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because you don't have a good elevator spe speech, and you're not specific. It has nothing to do with the classes you took. It's hold up a mirror. I'm telling you, I've been doing this 21 years. Met with thousands and thousands of people. I already know the reason. I can tell by what I typed. The notes I typed, I can tell. I okay. know you've done well in the past, but we're on here because you're not doing as well as you'd like to now. Things have changed. A lot of people can ride a wave of them being nice and excited and tapping into some people and putting in work. And I don't care how many referrals you got. You would have got 10 times more if you were more specific. Vague doesn't get you much. I know you think you've done well in the past. But we're sitting here. So that didn't get you what you needed to get. So I want you to understand, if you throw a broad net and say anybody, then Karina's going to work her ass off, meet a crap ton of people. Once in a while, yes, somebody's going to like you and you're going to catch them at the right time until you've gotten 500 referrals from financial planners, CPAs, estate planning attorneys, carpet cleaners, roofers, handyman. Until you've gotten 500 referrals from those people, then talk to me about being specific or vague. You will get nothing. You'll sell a you'll sell a home, and a friend's gonna a friend's gonna give you a referral to their next starter. That's awesome, and that's a 1917 Model T, and that's only gonna take you so far. Building a referral network, you have got to be laser and laser specific. There there's a saying, there's a saying, three inches three inches deep and a mile wide, or three inches wide and a mile deep. Off the top of the head, I would say families at this moment. I'm going to I'm gonna give you some more hope. Just let me, let me keep rolling. Okay? <laughs> I'm saying you need to have 10 different elevator pitches, not mm -hmm. one. Okay. 400,000 to 20 million. Great people. The, the, the part that will stay the same no matter what, because I have half of your, what you told me, I'm exact. People chase me. I don't chase them. They're nice. They answer the call. They don't show up late. They don't stand me up. They don't ask for discounts. They don't grind me to the freaking ground. And at the last minute, they'll go, hey, thanks for all your help, but I'm going to go with my neighbor. Mm -hmm. None of that happens to me because mm -hmm. I have referrals. The front part, though, is your fatal flaw. Mm -hmm. All real estate professionals say anything. I don't care anyone. Here's the thing. If I'm going to I'm going to explain it in our business. OK, my my wife, if she's going to talk to somebody, Karina, are you in your 40s? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you, let's say you had, you have a kid three years old. If my wife was going to meet with you and give a presentation, she would put in slides showing you how much college cost and say investing in land can help you pay for your kid's college future. If you didn't have a kid, no kids, and she put the college pain point slides in her presentation, would you even be listening to her? Correct. Mm -hmm. If you had a uh, 40 year old kids and you were in your seventies and Marcella was talking about how much college costs, would you listen? No. But if she put slides in there about leaving a legacy for your kids and your grandkids, you'd be on the edge of your seat. If I have to prove to you any further that you need to be specific, then let's just end the webinar now. No, no. So no. <laughs> if you're talking to someone who 
can afford a $500,000 home in their first time home buyers, you have to have an elevator pitch that sells only to first time home buyers with four hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars who have maybe have a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. It's not any but four hundred thousand to twenty million. Any when you're talking to a first time home buyer, it's a first time home buyer elevator pitch. If you're talking to somebody going to afford a twenty million dollar home, they don't give a crap how much college cost or retirement. They just want their next awesome home. So you're selling the dream of this awesome home with awesome views, but. All of that you're using to sell a $20 million home, none of it works for somebody first time home buyer. They don't care about the view. They want to know if they can afford the freaking payments. So then you'd bring in a mortgage lender and all that. So first time home buyer, empty nester, getting married, dying, marriage, upsize, downsize, every circumstance that a person has when you meet them, you have to be able to pull the arrow off out and fire that exact arrow that resonates with them. Look at yourself on camera. See your head shaking up and down like this. That's called firing the reticular activating system. You can only do that if you have a laser specific elevator pitch. This is being recorded and you can look back. When I said <laughs> it, you were doing this, which means you resonate with it and you agree with it and you can't hide it because you're doing this. <laughs> you can't get this out of people you talk to. If you just go, hey, good client for me is anybody, any area, 400,000 to 20 million, what you got? Now, here's where it's important to be specific when you're talking, when you have a client and you're talking to them and they go, yeah, my cousin, maybe. Karina, where you have to be really specific is if you're going to listen to me, you're going to start having coffee meetings with financial planners, mortgage lenders, estate planning attorneys, CPAs, and then you just look at the house, roofer, painter, carpet cleaner, handyman, people that mow the lawn, hairstylists, on and on and on. Yeah. Have you ever sold a home to somebody getting married? Yeah. Okay. Or maybe there's two people, they both own homes. They sell their homes and buy a home. That's three transactions. Yeah, that hasn't happened. <laughs> that, I know many people that has happened to it. If you look for it, this person owns a home. This person's 40. This person's 40. They both own condos. And now they're going to sell them both and buy a million dollar home. When they're getting married, and I'm going to just throw a curveball out there for you that a lot of people don't think about. Some people like working with people getting married. It's exciting. Great. Who do you network with? Photographer, wedding planner travel agent, limo driver, DJ, planner, people who put on the event planners. That's who you network with. Hairstylist, nail, chiropractor, fitness trainer. That's who you have coffee meetings with if you want to work with people getting married or first-time homebuyers. If you want investors, then you're going to have coffee meetings with CPAs, financial planners, estate planning attorneys. Now, if you want first-time homebuyers or people getting married, and you meet with a financial planner, all of his clients are net worth of 10 million or above. You probably should be talking to him about investors, not first time home buyers. So you have to have an absolute different pitch to a wealth advisor that works with wealthy people, to a CPA that works with business owners. That's a completely different elevator pitch. To a photographer who does weddings, that's a completely different elevator pitch. An estate planning attorney where people die and someone inherits a home. My grandmother died. I inherited a home with my dad and my sister. The first place we went, we sat in the office of the estate planning attorney. Number one goal, sell my grandmother's home. If he was a good networker, if he was a good networker, he would have opened up his drawer. That's my wife. And he would have said, call this person. I know you want to sell grandma's home. Call her. She can help you sell the home. If all you did was have coffee meetings with 500 estate planning attorneys, we wouldn't be sitting here talking. But you have to have an elevator pitch directly. So far, Karina, I haven't even really taught you anything yet. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Now, in land investing, our range is $20,000 to $2 million. Anyone with an old 401k doing a 1031 exchange, cash, inheritance, can buy land from us $20,000 to $2 million. They're nice people. They chase me. I don't chase them. They're deserving of the wealth we can help them create. That kind of sounded like yours, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to finish it. Karina, I'm going to show you the, the, the beginning part of my elevator pitch. I just explained to you who we like to work with. And then it's followed by who you hear say, which is what you don't have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you on video. 
I'm going to show you my card. I'm going to show you the back of the card. I'm going to show you. I'm pulling it up right now, so bear with me. This is why I don't go in with a set. I don't go into this with any form of a set plan because I don't know where it's going to go. Yours is jumping off the page at me how I can help you. When you watch this back, you're going to watch the transformation of you. I got, I, I transformed you. I finally got you to hear me. You weren't hearing me in the beginning. I got you. I saw the change. You'll see it on the video. All right. So Karina, we're going to talk about what your elevator pitch. I was forcing you to give it to me. What type of client you like to look for, their circumstance, the dollar range. I don't even really need to look at my notes. It was basically, I, I'll glance at it. Single family or multifamily any area all over LA, the whole nine counties, I'll go anywhere, work with anybody who's nice, $400,000 up to 40 million, anywhere, anytime. They're great people. They're nice people. They're super duper. They don't stand me up. They don't show up late. They don't try to insinuate. They know more about real estate than me. I'm the expert and they listen to my advice. And every real estate agent kind of has something like that. The ballers that I meet that are making as much or more than me or more specific. They say things like people who are going through a divorce, first time home buyers, empty nesters, inherited investors, and then they have an elevator pitch completely separate for each one of those circumstances. But we want to finish it off by firing the reticular activating system. And firing the reticular activating system is when you're talking to somebody and they start going, and they start shaking their head and going crazy. The crazier they go, the more you got them. So I'm going to show you how to fire the reticular activating system. Because when I asked you price range and we, we need to finish it, it's not done. We have a piece of granite, but da David hasn't been carved out yet. I want we're gonna carve out David, okay? Basically my wife's elevator pitch is, hi everyone. This is Marcella Silva, everyone, happy Friday. Today's dirt is tomorrow's gold. Land is a fundamental element in all of our lives. It's always been needed, will always be needed. And if you think about it, everybody and everything requires it. It cannot be replaced, cannot be manufactured. And when bought correctly, it continually rises in value without effort on the investor's part. And for over 45 years, we have helped investors get the highest quality land in the most high growth areas to maximize their investment. So if you hear a friend or family member say something like, I'm looking for an alternative investment. I lost a lot of money in Bitcoin and want a stable investment. I need to sell my rentals and looking to do a 1031 exchange. I just opened a self-directed IRA. Uh, those would be great referrals for me. Good power partners are mortgage professionals, life coaches, bookkeepers, money coaches, leaders of real estate investment groups, and people who run podcasts. Marcella Silva, Investing in Land, because they're not making any more of it. Spread the love, spread the joy, everyone. Thank you. Let me show you this real quick. That's my wife, Marcella. You can see California real estate license, though we do not do houses, land only. And now here we go. I'm going to show you the back of my card, and I'm going to show you how to fire the reticular activating system. That's the front of the card. This is the back of the card. And now I'm going to show you on the screen. And I'm going to read them to you. This fires the reticular activating system. This gets people, especially when you start meeting other professionals, not your sphere, not people at your kid's baseball game and people at the church. I don't ever talk to them because people don't want to see you coming. You're trying to sell me a house again. Meeting other professionals, financial planners, estate planning attorneys, CPAs, mortgage lenders, you program their mind to listen for circumstances that can bring you a referral. The only way you can program their mind is fire the reticular activating system. The only way to fire the reticular activating system is word for word quotes. <clears throat> so I'm going to share my screen with you. And this is on the back of our business card. Karina, they're great people. They're nice people. They're super duper people. They have this amount of money, this amount of money. For us, it's nice people. They're looking for alternative investments. They're deserving of the wealth we can provide. And they say things like, my 401k only goes up when I put money into it. I'm sick of tenants, toilets, termites, troubles, and taxes. Some people are tired of rentals. The stock market's too volatile. I want to diversify my real estate portfolio. Hey, I got this house that went up and I'm going to sell it. I need to do a 1031 exchange so I don't pay capital gains. I can't put enough money away to retire. I inherited some money. I don't know what the heck to do with it. I want to invest in real estate. I don't even know what I qualify for. I was thinking about investing in gold. I need to recoup money I lost. Now, Karina, we have about 30 more. Okay. So if I meet 
someone who doesn't have kids, because we've met people who've said things like, I need to recoup my, my cashed out my 401k to pay for my kid's college. Now I need to rebuild. If they have kids, we're going to use pay for college. We're going to use can't retire. I don't know how I'm going to retire. If it's a second home, it's going to be more, I need to diversify. I need other investments. If they're tired of their seven rentals, so depending on who we're talking to and the circumstance is dependent on which, remember I was saying you got to have, if you're talking to a financial planner who has business owners as clients, then we need to craft an elevator pitch to program the mind of the financial advisor so he thinks of you when one of his clients says, I'm thinking of buying an investment property. Oh, say no more. I just had coffee with Karina. Here's her card. Give her a call. She'll help you buy your next investment. Then that financial advisor, when he does that, and you get a call from the client, they're chasing you, correct? Mm -hmm. That's my whole life. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I can spend just on this topic 30 hours. I, I would like to, if you don't mind, go a little, show you the format of how this whole thing works, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. to put it in perspective for you. Okay, Karina, before I even go into this, I'm not here to twist your arm to go to my website and buy my course. But this is going on YouTube and I want people to know if you really want to learn how to do all of this stuff, you go to onereferralaway.com and there's a course there, 795 bucks. There's seven hours of webinars training and then it comes with two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you want to learn how to do all this, you go to onereferralaway.com. The course is there. All right, I want to get that out of the way and I want to go over with you a lot of people think you go to a networking event or you join that you go to divorce club and all of a sudden referrals is going to come flying at you. You might have had success with that in the past and you might have success now by just getting these certifications, going to the classes and getting some referrals. But generally it's I joined this, I joined that and I got nothing out of it. And my response is because you did nothing. You think you did. You went there, you showed up, you talked to people. You handed out your business cards and all of that is marketing. Not one of those things is networking. Going to a networking event and talking to people and handing out your card is not networking. That is marketing. So networking is when you meet a banker and you introduce him to a financial planner. When you meet a financial planner, you introduce him to a life insurance agent. When you're doing things that have nothing to do with Karina making money, then you're networking. Any efforts you're doing that directly feed you is marketing. It's very hard to get referrals when you're marketing. You might get some leads, but you're not going to get a lot of referrals. And I'm going to do my best to explain this to you. You need these 10 things to start getting referrals from other people. Yes, I know you've gotten some in the past, Karina. I got it. But I want to get you referrals now. And I'd like you to get referrals not from your past clients because it's not enough volume. I want you to get, let's put it this way, knock on 100 doors and make a sale. Now, Karina, if you walked up and down the street right now and knocked on 100 doors and made a sale, by definition, you're now unemployed. And you have to go knock on another 100 doors, right? Yeah. yeah. What I tell people is don't ever cold call, don't ever door knock. Don't ever talk to your sphere because there's not enough leverage. Now, I'm going to tell you, Karina, knock on 100 doors of financial planners, estate planning attorneys, mortgage lenders, and teach them how to send you referrals. If you had 100 coffee meetings and each one of those people sent you a deal every five years. That'd be great. Pretty good. What if you, like I have, and I'll show you a picture of her, meet a mortgage lender and in six years... Six years, 105 closed real estate transactions for one lady. One. Yeah. I have a money coach. It's pushing 60. Mm -hmm. 60 from a money coach. So, Karina, if you go up and down the street knocking on doors, you make a sell, you're unemployed. <clears throat> I have coffee meetings with money coaches and, and mortgage lenders. Build a relationship. I might have to meet 100 mortgage lenders to get two to work with me. People go, every mortgage lender knows 10 real estate agents, meet more. Because mm -hmm. sooner or later, Karina, you're going to meet a mortgage lender who's working with a real estate agent, but that real estate agent is sick, got COVID, moved away, died, retired, screwed up a deal, 
And that mortgage lender just so happened to be looking for a new agent to work with. Mm -hmm. You'll never find them if you don't meet with them for coffee. Mm -hmm. Every real estate agent I talk to, I don't know, mortgage lenders are getting hit up all the time. I can teach you how to get in with mortgage lenders. You'll be the only one they talk to. <clears throat> 105 to 107 transactions. Then I have a money coach that I, I think pushing 70, 70 closed transactions. Remember when I said, Karina, if my wife showed you slides for how much college costs for your kid, but you didn't have any kids, you wouldn't even be listening. If you say any luxury, any 20 million, I do up to 20 million to a mortgage lender who only goes up to 600,000. Yeah. So I know you want to work with anything and anyone. I know. And I know you want night people. And I know you want them to chase you. But when you meet a trusted advisor, you have to fire their reticular activating system so they freaking listen to you. So you need to have 20 elevator pitches for that reason. See how you're shaking your head again? Mm -hmm. I'm right. <laughs> now, I'm going to go back to the 10 parts. Karina, I know I told you an hour. We're going over an hour unless you don't have the time. Do you have a little extra time? I'm fine. Guess what? Number one, you already did. Because in the beginning, I asked you what you did before this. And you told me the whole story about the years in the movie industry. I think it was 10 or 20 years. I don't have all the exact detail, but uh, you worked on a feature film. It got a bunch of awards and you made a living. You didn't make enough to build up your savings, but you made a living. And then... A little bit later in life, you had a kid. You didn't have a kid when you're 18 or 22 or 25. You had a kid yeah. in your late 30s, I'm guessing. Yeah, there you go. I'm 55, but I have a 21-year-old, almost 22, and a 19-year-old. And a I, you know, I started when I was 30. So you have this whole story. You, you did this thing, and it fed you, and you loved it, but it burnt you out, and you were looking for something that could give you a little more flexibility in life, help you earn a living, and if at some point you make enough, you can invest in real estate and that's what's going to take you to the next level and you have a kid. So you needed something that get, gave you flexibility and you're telling this story of drama. And Karina, we're not going to do it here, but I, I know you've had a rough time with your family and you might want to figure out how to weave just a little, not enough to where we don't want people to be too sad for us, but we want to build a little drama so people are got a little bit on the edge of their seat like this, hearing your story. Because the more people get to know you, especially the trusted advisors, the more they're going to feel comfortable sending you referrals. If I asked you, Karina, why'd you get into real estate? To make money? Then you are not going to have success as a real estate agent. Because walk up this and we go, hey, why'd you get in real estate? To make money. What you got? What you got? What you got? What you got? People go, that's a slimy used car salesman. So you need to craft your personal story, Karina. And I already got a bunch of it out of you already. I repeated it back to you. Hope you're impressed. But a little bit of that. When you meet a financial planner, two or three minutes on your personal story. Five minutes. And then the avatar is where you get very specific on... If you're meeting a wedding planner, we're not going to talk about how we specialize in when someone dies and inherit a home. We're not talking about investment properties. If it's a wedding planner, we're specifically talking about how Karina specializes in working with newlyweds when they're looking to buy their first home. Do you understand? See how it, see how specific that is? Karina, I know you want to work with everybody, but if that person only works with wedding people, then you only talk about that. Of course. Now, if you're talking to an estate planning attorney, it's inheriting because a family member died or they're setting up, if they do trust, they're setting up a trust to protect their assets. A lot of times those people are, are a little bit older and or investors that have got something to lose. And we're going to talk about how Karina, you specialize in helping investors find properties. Talking to a estate planning attorney, probably not going to start talking about people just getting married. So with every professional, we have to have different things. We say we're taking the different arrow and we're aiming at that different target depending on who we're talking to. You can only do that with your personal story added onto your avatar of what exactly are you looking for with that person you're talking to. Are we making a little bit of sense so far? Try not to be too confusing. Yeah, the avatar I'm a little bit confused about. Is, sure. is that what I target towards like the specific 
the worst. Or yeah. Your avatar would be, and if you're confused, people watching this on YouTube might be, let me explain. Let me go a little deeper. Your avatar is your first time home buyer mm -hmm. or an empty nester or an investor. People getting divorced need to sell the home. People getting married need to buy a home. They need to do a 1031 exchange. Whatever their different circumstances are, each person has a different story to tell. Okay. We're getting that's married. Cool. What's that? And that's the avatar. Yes. Your avatar is a, each individual circumstance of the people you work with. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest life-changing thing I'm trying to work on with you because you can't walk up to every person you say is a good client for you is anybody, anywhere, any dollar amount, any city. See my, I don't know if you can see me on camera. It's probably small, but like it's hard to get referrals from that. Yeah, no, I get it. Which is why I showed you the back of the card and I read those exact circumstances to you, which falls under avatar and elevator pitch. Now there's some laws we have to follow. The law of reciprocity, the law of attraction, the law of mutual exchange, the law of increasing returns, the law of abundance of Parkinson's law. And I'm not going over all these laws. That's all in the course. I am not spending an hour on that. But what I will say is, Karina, have you ever planted any kind of a plant in the ground. Most people have. Now, when you plant a seed, if you nurture it, if you give it the right amount of water, not too much, you can't give it no water and you can't give it too much water, the proper sunlight, not too much, not too little, in the proper soil, there's a very good chance it'll grow, correct? Mm -hmm. So if when we're meeting with mortgage lenders and financial planners and CPAs, if we're nurturing that relationship, not too much, not too little, just the right amount with the right stories. Do you see your head shaking up and down? I got you again. You're still doing it. I pointed <laughs> it out and you're still doing it because I'm firing the reticular activating system in your brainstem. If you do the right things, people are going to send you referrals, but you have to do the right things. Mm. With a financial planner, Karina, you're not going to sell them a home. That's not why you're meeting a referral partner. You're going to educate them. Yeah. But if Karina wants to go to the next level, and if you want to be a real estate agent who goes to the next level, that financial planner you met with, introduce him to a banker, a CPA, a state planning attorney, and now you're just not somebody looking to suck transactions out of him. If you met a CPA, I promise that CPA wants to meet a business coach, a financial planner, a bookkeeper, a life agent. A banker wants to meet CPAs all day long, commercial real estate agents. Real estate agents want to meet mortgage lenders, carpet cleaners, financial planners. So what you can do, Karina, is you can do this. Mm -hmm. And you become a connector. Not of your clients as much to other people, mm -hmm. but your network to your network. Now, I own millions and millions of dollars worth of land in LA, and I only know three cities. I know Van Nuys a little bit. I know Lancaster and Palmdale, but if I was down there networking and I met a, I'm a real estate agent, you met a mortgage lender uh, in one city, he might le like to meet a financial planner in another city and you start connecting your, and, and I understand that these are vague here. I just threw, but since you're real estate, you actually plug yourself in here, remove this and start connecting your network to your network. You introduce an attorney to a financial planner, a mortgage lender to a banker and just start introducing people to people, then you become much more than every time I hear from Karina, all she wants to do is send me a re referral or, or she's bilking me to buy the next house. And then you become this transactional person. It's very hard to have a long career with that. When people see you coming and they're ducking their head, that's not who we want to be. If we follow this, that's not who you'll be. You have a good personal story to get people to fall for you business-wise, not fall in love with you, fall in love with you as a business person. Then you're very specific on what you're looking for. Then you follow the laws and then you have an unbelievably good elevator pitch. This, at one referral away, there's a button you can click and you can watch a training video on how to craft your elevator pitch. Using these three things have to be in it. And then Karina, we have to lift. We have to list industries that we want to network with. So <clears throat> most coaches, Brian Buffini, Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, all these trainers, they teach this side. They teach talk to your sphere and talk to your past clients. When you were brand new in the business, you didn't have any past clients, Karina. And if you came here from another country or if you came here from another industry, you may not have a sphere that can help you in real estate. 
Yeah, it didn't happen. You have to build it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, when they get coached on this side, they feel helpless. I don't mm -hmm. have any past clients. I don't have a sphere. And I say, I'm here to make you happy. Don't ever talk to your past clients. Don't ever talk to your sphere. They don't want to see you coming and there's no leverage. This is knocking on doors, walking up and down the street. And I've already proved to you, if you knock on doors and you make a sale, you're now unemployed. You have to do it all over again. I'm telling them to cut you in half of the samurai sword. And this side of Karina is the only side I want you to think about. Mm -hmm. This side is where we're going to have coffee meetings with mortgage lenders, financial planners, estate planning attorneys. Now, I will tell you this, Karina, if you really want to be successful, you get a pen and a paper and you write down 50, 50, 50 to 150 different industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've named five or six. My wife can name 163. Wow. And she's had 4,000 coffee meetings. My wife's 43 years old. She started doing land investing and land banking when she was 29. She was working at Lawrence Livermore Lab as a software engineer. I was homeless sleeping on a futon because I get divorced. February 12, 2008, my house went down $300,000 under market. That was the real estate crash. I couldn't sell it. I gave it to my ex-wife. I live with a friend. He moved away. I moved into my office, slept on a futon. I have all the slides. Almost every one of my presentations, I showed the slides. I showed the car that got repossessed, all that stuff. When I met my wife, she was going to networking groups and just randomly talking. And I taught her how to speak at networking events, taught her how to speak in networking groups, and taught her to stop trying to sell to everyone she meets and educate them and fire the reticular activating system. I'm homeless at 39 years old. She's 28. She's 28 when we met. We started going hardcore in land banking when she was 29 and I was 41. I moved in with her after dating for four or five months. I was sleeping on a futon, showering at the gym, homeless to multimillionaire with what I'm telling you right now. You write down industries. If I'm a real estate agent, 150 different industries is quite simple. Now, I'm recording this, so you'll be able to play this back. But normally, when I ask a real estate agent who's a good referral partner, they say mortgage lenders and financial planners. But if I went to your office and asked all 100 agents, what's your best referral partner? They're going to name the same three to five. Yeah. So I'm Morgan. telling you, Karina, if you had 100, you have 95 that they, don't, they haven't even thought of. Mm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you down the road of working on your list because I want you to have a big list, and then I want you to have coffee with them. So let's work on the list first. Secondly, where do I find them? Because you'd said that in the first five minutes of us talking. I'll give you some ideas. I don't give that away for free, but I'll give you some ideas. I'm not going to give you the scripting on how to get them to meet you, but I'll give you some ideas on where to find them. There are certain things I just don't give out on recording or for free, but I'm giving you quite a bit. So to work on the list of referral partners, this is Karina. So right here, this says real estate agent. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. This now has all your different avatars. First time home buyer, empty nester, divorced, needs a house, died, inherited, uh, investor wants to buy his 10th property, a renter who doesn't know if they can afford, they're getting a bit of bonus check, they want to buy their first home. So death, marriage, upsize, downsize, every circumstance you could think of as to why somebody would want to buy or sell a home is in here. And we start with the first one. You give me a circumstance. It has to be a specific, Karina. Give me any circumstance why somebody would want to buy or sell a home. They have a, the first kid on the way or a second kid on the way. Beautiful. And they got to upsize. So uh, a, a married couple has kid number two on the way. Who might they mention that to? And they want to get a bigger house. Who might they say that to? Industries. Go. I've already named about 30 of them. The mortgage guy, of course, okay. and, and then the state planner, depending yep. on how they're doing. Beautiful. Keep going. Or a lawyer. They might want to do a trust with yep. the hairdresser. Beautiful. There you go. Now you're getting it. The pediatrician of the first child. Beautiful. That's five. Stop there. Mm -hmm. Do we have five now? Okay. Give me another circumstance where somebody would be looking to buy or sell a home. Now they want to down, downsize. Keep in mind, I already named about 10 when I showed you the circle. Just steal from now me. Now they want to downsize because the kids are going off. Smaller to home. Yeah. So in this case, they own a home. Mm -hmm. They need to downsize. So let me ask you this. I'm going to I'm gonna like blow kind of your thought process out here. 
if they already own a home. So Karina, I know the answer is yes. I don't ask tr trick questions. I'm not that smart. When you walk into someone's home, has there ever, I know the an if the answer is no, then I'll fall on the floor. You'll have to drive to Northern California and pick me up. Have you ever walked into a home and said, before we can sell this house, we need to put some paint on the walls. We need to clean the house. We need to maybe even stage it. We need to clean the carpets. We need to trim the bushes in the backyard. Has that ever happened in the history of the world with you or any other agent more than 10,000 times a day for the last hundred years? Yes, it has happened. Has it not? Sure. Okay. It's not the first thing you say. <laughs> no, I understand that. But there's going to come a time when you're in their home and go, before I can list the home. We should do, or it would be helpful to, or yeah. If you want to get biggest dollar, mm -hmm. we need to mow the lawn in the backyard. This is my opinion, Karina. Me. Mm -hmm. Your job. The first seven-figure earner real estate ever agent I ever met sat down with me and this is how I made a million dollars a year for the last five years. And she opens up a trifold brochure. This is what she said to me. It's my responsibility. When I walk into a home and need a carpet cleaner, a roofer, a chimney sweep, a handyman, a general contractor, an HVAC guy, it's my job to hand those professionals to my client as their trusted advisor. So my response to you and every agent that ever watches this, have you had 150 coffee meetings with those industries? HVAC, carpet cleaner, handyman, general contractor, roofer, 100 or 200 coffee meetings. So you can have two or three of each industry to literally hand to your client on a silver platter with scripting, teaching them how anything that client ever needs, they should ask you. And teaching the carpet cleaner how to keep their eyes and ears open for more real estate deals for you. And I know the answer is no, nobody has. Mm -hmm. So if this person, they're downsizing because the last kid just went off to college, by you providing all those industries, which I'll repeat again, carpet cleaner, maybe even carpet, hardwood flooring, painter, electrician, general contractor, gardener, let's clean the house up a little bit. I have everyone on tap call this person. In fact, I'll call them if you want and I'll get them to come over here. And when you do that. And I ask you, how do you bet all those people? I just Maybe. told you, you got to have 150 or 200 coffee meetings and you have to meet them. If they stand you up, show you up don't late. Know, you don't know if they're going to end up doing a good job. You Correct. can have a 100%. great conversation with yeah. them. But... Yeah, that's called the power of three, which okay. I'll, I, I didn't want to be here for six hours. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll do my best to answer that. Okay. Number one, the number one vetting process, Karina, is when you set a coffee meeting with somebody that they show up on time. They show up late, they're going to show up late to your client. So the number one vetting process is showing up on time. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, if they have a website and they have testimonials, you can do research. You can find them on Facebook, LinkedIn, their, their page, Better Business Bureau is another way. And then the number one concern with people who have fears about doing the coffee meetings and vetting the people is this, you don't know. And I don't care if they showed up on time. I don't care if they smell good, look good, make you happy. And they have 10,000 testimonials. They might show up late for your client and they might do a crappy job. Karina, we can't control, we can't live our life. The person seemed good. They showed up on time. They got great reviews. We can't live our life. Oh, oh, oh. What if one time in their life they screw up and it's my client? We can't live in fear. And I'm going to take it the way the best I can. Number one, we have to think positively because most people actually do try to be, they're well-meaning because they're trying to keep their business going too, Karina. So they're going to do their best to do a good job. You met them for coffee. There's something called the power of three. There's a video on my YouTube channel. You guys should go watch it called the power of three. I'm going to give you the very short version. Karina, there's no circumstance on the planet earth where you should be giving your client one industry. Ever. Attorneys cannot. Attorneys have to give three. If they give less than three, they could be disbarred. So the reason attorneys have to give three referrals, three names, when you give your client a carpet cleaner, the reason, let's use financial planner, something with a little bit a bigger impact that they screw up. If you referred one financial planner to your client, if you refer one financial planner to your client and that person loses your client a bunch of money, they're going to be pretty pissed off at you for referring them. In real estate, you wouldn't lose your real estate license, but a financial planner, a CPA, or an attorney could be in big trouble.
The reason attorneys give three and doctors three names is it removes all exposure from you. So the scripting is if you give one, hey, call this person, he'll help you. The way we remove ourselves from the burden, but we're helping our client the best we can. You give three financial planners. So there's my networking card. There's my land banking card. There's my wife's card. There's three people there. Introduce your client to one financial planner, two financial planner, three financial planner. Karina, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm giving you three financial planners. I haven't done business with any of them. I, I can't do business with 9,000 people, mm -hmm. but I've met each one of them for coffee. They seem like great people. And based on what they told me, their expertise is, I, I, I think one of them can help you. I'm not going to tell you who to work with. Mm -hmm. I think you should talk to all three and pick the one you like best. Do you see, Karina, I don't know if you see it, the entire time you're doing this, because I just changed your life. I answered your question. <laughs> okay, good. So I didn't get, I, I hope you're seeing that networking, networking is a vast topic, Karina, and it's something where you need to have a, a crap ton of coffee meetings. Relying on your past clients to send you business is a horse and buggy works great and it'll get you down the road, but so will, so will a brand new Maserati and much better. The much the Maserati is starting to have coffee meetings with professionals, having a good avatar, a good elevator pitch, being specific and meeting a lot of them. So you have tons of them to introduce to your clients. So I'm going to do another one here for you. And that is someone getting married. And who are they going to tell? Oh, well, I sold jewelry for two years. Or damn sure you're going to tell a jeweler, a photographer, a DJ, a wedding planner, where they get their wedding dress, the bakery where they get the, the tuxedo, if I didn't say limo driver, travel agent, hairstylist, you know the lady's going to want to, every woman I've ever met, oh, I'm getting married, I got to fit in my dress. Fitness trainer, chiropractor, massage, dietitian, all of those people. If you want to specialize in selling homes to people getting married, I just handed you millions and millions of dollars. So I told you I'd help you work on the list. And then we have to talk about, that was just a list. So all we talk about is your personal story. you got to know exactly what kind of client you're looking for. You have to follow the laws. And the, the biggest one for you is the law of mutual exchange and the law of increasing returns, where when you meet a financial planner, you introduce him, financial planner to a mortgage lender, financial planner to a banker. You start introducing your network to your network. Mm -hmm. So that's right here following the laws. And you have to have uh, multiple different elevator pitches for when you're actually talking to human beings. Then you have to come up with that list of industries. Then you have to figure out where you're going to find them. Networking events, Chamber of Commerce websites, and Google Maps. And that's as deep as I'm going to go. You ask me a question at the beginning, how do you find them? Chamber of Commerce websites, networking events, Google Maps. Okay. You want me to teach you how to be master and get people to chase you down the street? One referral away dot com. Meet with you got to meet them for coffee. And then Karina, what are you going to do and what are you going to say? You need to teach them how to send your referrals and then you need to stay top of mind. Six through ten, kind of top secret. That's the secret sauce. That's what's that's what the coaching clients get. But I did spend an hour and 15 minutes just to drive home. It took me about 20 minutes to get you to listen because the first 20 minutes was everybody, everything, everywhere, everybody, anything, anywhere. I can do anything. I'll drive anywhere. And that's great. Here's what I want, Karina. You know what I want for you? Mm -hmm. I, I know you said that. This is what I want for you. There is, if I really made you give it to me, there's a specific price range that gets you so excited. And it may not be the 60 million because how hard it is to freaking market for those. It may not be the 400,000. It might be 1.6 million first time home buyer empty. There is something. 3 million gets me really excited. Okay. 3 million. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a dollar amount. Yeah. There is a circumstance. Some people do not want to work with first time home buyers because they don't want to babysit. Some mm -hmm. people want to work with somebody who's buying their 10th home. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not going to tell you what the, I want to, what Karina loves is all that matters in Rick Silva's life. There is a dollar amount, there is a circumstance, and there is a city. 
And I know there's some cities you have sold homes in. You'd rather not do that two hour drive in traffic. If you could find the dollar amount, the perfect client and be within five, there's enough real estate within one mile of, I know where you live. I've been down there. There's enough real estate within six blocks of you for you to earn $10 million and retire in five years. Easy. In one block, you could retire. It's LA. I know you don't want to drive three hours. You're insane if you do. If I could teach you how to get business all within three miles of where you're sitting right now, the perfect client, the perfect dollar amount, you're not going to get any of that by saying, anybody, anywhere, I'll drive nine counties. You're not. You're going to meet other professionals and you are going to tell them exactly what you're looking for. And then you're going to introduce them to other professionals. You're going to give them a nice little presentation when you meet them, either on Zoom or face-to-face. -face. Show them where you grew up. Show them a, a, a couple stills or a marketing piece of the movie you made. The ups and downs. Get them on the edge of their seat. And then tell them why you got out of it. The grind. I just, it was my passion. I did it for 20 years, 50 hours a day. It was killing me. I was getting sick, blah, 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 whatever. But when I was done, I was so fulfilled with the movie I made, but I had no money. I made a living, but I wasn't able to put any money away. And you tell this story of drama, Karina. And then you go into what kind of client you're looking for and how you guys could help each other build your business. That is how you build a referral network. That is not going to networking events and handing out your card. Yeah. That is not joining a divorce thing and going, I got nothing out of it. Because I can assure you, I could teach you how to get more deals out of it than you could ever imagine. But you have to have the right elevator pitch and you have to be all the stuff I showed you on the slide. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. That's the iceberg where you see this much of it. And then there's this much underneath. I gave you like three pieces of snowflake on the top of the iceberg as to what it is to build a network. Now, we're an hour and 23 minutes into our one hour session. But I'll answer a couple of questions for you if you have anything, or if I wore you out, you can just tell me to leave now. What would, would you want me to answer a couple of questions? What would you like? No, you didn't wear me out. Any tip on one thing that I can do that for now gets me to, to a new client or to? For immediate. Yeah. yeah here's the challenge. Uh, I'm going to say yes and no. Networking is slow. I know. <laughs> I can well, go. It can be fast. It can yeah, be it can fast. be very it can be very fast or very slow. And it all depends on how we define slow. Yeah. If you're not doing all of those things I showed you, it's really freaking slow. Yeah. It's really freaking slow. Yeah. My definition of slow doing it balls out, busting your ass in this market four to ten weeks in the market before the market we're in right now could be three days. But what I'm trying to do is help you build a long career. Mm -hmm. If it's immediate, I can't really help you with immediate other than door knocking and cold calling. But I have a guy right now that I'm coaching in Washington. And he went on fire. And his first week, he did five coffee meetings. And the next week, he got introduced. He met with, he, all, he goes, I'm going to meet 25 financial planners. He met five the first week, three the next week. He got the 25 and three, three or four weeks. I don't remember the exact numbers, but he met 25 financial planners. In the second week, the second or third financial planner he met at a coffee meeting with one of his clients. And the guy said, I'm thinking about, about, about buying an investment property. The guy goes, I just met with a real estate agent last week and he sent them his card. Yeah. I'm excited about the idea of the coffee meetings. So here's the thing. I like that. Whether you do it face-to-face -face or Zoom, that's your choice. Uh, give me, based on everything we talked about, give me one or two industries that you think you feel pretty comfortable with, like having a coffee meeting with. Of all those industries I named, give me two. I guess the the financial planner or the um, wedding planner. Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. So let's do financial planner because there's more of them. If I am giving you stuff I don't usually give out, I'm not going to give you super detail. You're going to figure this out. I'm not showing this on camera. Type in any city in the United States in Google Maps and type in, a, type in an industry. I'm not saying anymore. Your head will explode. And when you see that list longer than three of your arms, you need to reach out to them and get them to either meet you face to face or for coffee.
-hmm. and then talk to them about what kind of clients you're looking for, your background, why you got into real estate. You need to build this. Mm -hmm. You could go have five coffee meetings this week with financial planners, but without the proper avatar, your story, which I've already told you on recording, I've already told your story three times, <laughs> but I would have it in slide form. Mine, mm -hmm. I have in my slides, the car that got repossessed, which will be on the screen right now because I'm overlay this one before I post this on YouTube. The car that got repossessed, the office I moved into and slept on the futon, and I showered at the gym. I have all of that in slides, what the building looked like, what my office looked like, the futon I slept on, and the car that got repossessed. I tell a whole story about that. At, at 39 years old, I'm sleeping on a freaking futon. At 45 years old, I'm balling. 48 years old, I'm a millionaire. 55, multimillionaire. Doing everything I just told you. I'm finding people. I'm telling them my story. I'm telling them what kinds of referrals I'm looking for. And then when I ask the, you're going to ask a financial planner what kind of client you're looking for. They're going to say anybody. And then you're going to get mad at them like I got mad at you. No. Nope. I can't find you anybody. I've never in my life walked down the street and shook the hands of someone and they said, hey, I'm Mr. Anybody. Finally, I met Mr. Anybody. No. There is a circumstance that you're looking for as a financial planner. Mm -hmm. Minimum anybody. So if like Karina, if I meet a financial planner, they go, I can work with anybody. I go, cool. So if they have $5 in a piggy bank, oh no, they have to be liquid at least 250,000 to be able to serve them. You didn't say that. You said mm -hmm. anybody. So I'm going to leave now and I'm going to send you somebody with five. Here, this is what I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you someone with, with a jar of change. You said you could work with anybody. So Karina, when I first started talking, you said anybody. So I'm going to I'm going to introduce you to somebody. This is all they have to buy a home. You're going to go, no, they have to be qualified. Ah, you didn't say that. Mm -hmm. You see how specific is better? Mm -hmm. So you're going to meet a financial planner. He's going to say anybody and you're going to ride him like I rode you. No. How much money do they have? Do they need life insurance? Do they have to have an old 401k? Do they life, whole term? What are the circumstances? Do they have a job, inherit it? Everybody has circumstances. You're going to meet financial planners. You're going to get their circumstance. You're going to figure out what type of clients they're looking for. You're going to tell them what you're looking for. And you're going to meet over and over and over with financial planners until you get sick. And now you've only done one industry. I'm telling you 150 industries is a joke. We just talked about one mm -hmm. because Karina, when you get walk into someone's home and they need a carpet cleaner, you better be giving them three where you're going to get three. You're going to have 20 coffee meetings with 20 carpet cleaners to find three. Mm -hmm. You're going to have 20, 30, 40, 50 coffee with financial planners to find three or four you like, but we have to have 150 industries times 50, 50 coffee meetings each. That's 800 coffee meetings. That'd be a minimum. Okay. So I have another question. So in your course that you're offering for some nine hundred dollars, right? Yep. In fact, I don't recall. I think it's um, seven ninety five. I don't even look at it. I think it's seven ninety five. Yeah, go okay. ahead. What are you teaching? Yeah. Can you give me a breakdown of what's there? Do you see my mouse going across the screen back and forth? Mm -hmm. So if somebody just wants help with their elevator pitch, they click this button, they watch two videos. It's ninety nine bucks. They watch two videos, they send me their elevator pitch. I critique it on video and send them their finished elevator pitch and me doing it on video and me fixing it on video. This one is if people just want one-on-one -on -one coaching, one hour is 250, two hours 395, six hours 995. There are coaches who charge thousands of dollars for six hours. Karina, here's where I'm different. I help people invest in land. I've already made a fortune. I'm not here to rip people off. I don't need the money, but you have to pay. I'm not giving this stuff away for free. Okay, so this button here in the middle, 795, Click the button. Here's a write-up, which I am not going to read to you. Talks all about what's covered. It's 795 bucks, including two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching, or people can make payments. This is covers your networking pipeline, selling, marketing, and networking, your elevator pitch. It covers all of those laws, by the way, I told you about. What to do at networking groups, and that is not handing out your business cards. What to do at networking event, what to do, what to say, how to find the right people when you go to networking events. Staying top of mind, how to get testimonials and use them. Cold calling, turning a cold call into a warm call, into a referral. Your ant farm teaching other people how to send you business. Now you have the referral, what do you do? 
goal setting and time management, and then your entire networking game plan. Now, in the two hours, you see how fast I got off of that because I'm not really comfortable doing a pitch fest. If people want to learn more, go there. Go to my YouTube channel and see all about Rick Silva. I'm not going to hear. Okay. People find me who want to find me. I'm not. I love helping people, and there's only so much I'm going to do for free. But the two-hour one-on-one coaching is where I do my best after you learn how to network. Because if you don't know how to network, some of the stuff I'm even teaching you today is not going to work. You have to know what networking is. And people think networking is handing out a business card. And I wish that's what it is, but that's marketing. Networking is a whole system that I created, which is that course. In the two hours, then we get into that number six through 10 that I'm not going to give you a ton of detail on. Make the list. I will make the list with you. Mm -hmm. I will help you craft the email. I will write it with you that you're going to send to those financial planners to get them to meet with you. Mm -hmm. So you do go by email, you wouldn't just call them up. Hey, if you want to call them, I'll give you the phone script. Most oh. people want to go online, find 20 financial planners, send 20 emails out and go on with their day and wait for them to respond. Oh yeah, well, absolutely. That's yeah. what I do. I don't do anything anymore, but that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I never called them on the phone. Mm -hmm. Because I could email a hundred professions in a couple hours and it would take you a lifetime to cut them on the phone. Yeah. Because you have then you have to get through the gatekeeper and the secretary and all that crap, which I could teach you how to do if you wanted to. Yeah. So it's the coaching is make the list, find them, get them dying to have coffee with you. And then what are you gonna say during the coffee meeting? Now I can tell you this: making the list, finding them, and crafting the email is going to suck a very big, if not all of the free two hours. Okay. If you then want to get into your slide by slide presentation, when you meet those professionals, the whole strategy behind what you're going to do with those referral partners to build this vast network, that's when you got to get into the six hours of coaching. But the course and the two hours is going to make you You'll be a hundred times more knowledgeable at networking than any other 99 people in that office. You will be very dangerous and you'll be very dangerous if you're going to any kind of a networking event. Now, Karina, here's the thing. I know you can't go to too many nighttime events, even midday. There are more. You're with me right now. I'm looking at you. Where's your son or daughter? Do you have a daughter? I forgot. My son. Where is he right now? In the forest school. Perfect. So right now you could be at a Chamber of Commerce ribbon cutting for a half an hour. Mm -hmm. Right now you could be, my wife is the member of all, of, I, I run networking groups for a living. I run five monthly networking groups right now. I'm still a professional networker. My wife is in seven other networking groups. They're all on Zoom. She doesn't go to anything face-to-face -face anymore. She's been to a thousand face-to-face -face networking meetings. All of it is on Zoom. You could be in multiple networking groups. If your son goes to daycare, you could be in a networking group. You could be sending out emails today, setting up a coffee meeting for three days from now. And, and three, three on Thursday morning, you could be on with, with a financial planner. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you could do, but going to a networking group, going to a ribbon cutting, going to a, a, a in-person mixer with what you were saying an hour and 26 minutes ago, and what you should be saying aren't even in the same, they're not even in the same planet with mm -hmm. what I would teach you. The course would teach you what to do and what to say in the networking groups and networking events, mm -hmm. which is different than what you said. Now, when I was asking you the energy you had, I'll go anywhere, I'll serve my clients, anybody. I want you to keep that energy is what's going to get clients. Mm -hmm. But that energy aimed at a specific target with a purposeful avatar and a purposeful elevator pitch. If that energy and what you were saying before was working to a T, you would not be sitting here with me because you'd be so busy working on, on, on listings that you wouldn't have time for me. The people that have time for me, I'm trying to just, all I get to do is those old school switchboards, pull a couple plugs out and re rewire it to get a different phone number. I want to take that energy I saw in you an hour and 36 minutes ago. <laughs> and I just want to re-aim it. So mm -hmm. I want you to think about this. Karina, I'm in a four-wheel drive truck and I'm on a dirt road. Karina is in a four-wheel drive truck on a dirt road. Your truck goes into a puddle and you're flooring it and the wheels are spinning 40 miles an hour, but you're not going anywhere, but you're working hard and you're trying and the wheels are spinning. You're going, you're not going where you want to go. I'm on a dirt road 
my tires are spinning 40 and I'm going 40. You're back there, tire spinning going 40. I'm going 40. You're going, bless you. It's me. <laughs> I busted my ass. I'm working hard. I'm smarter than that person. I work harder than them. Why are they so much more successful than me? Because your tires are in the mud spinning. You have the energy. You're putting in the effort. But the tires are spinning because we're not directing the energy to the right place. So I want to teach you how to, I'm going to pick your car up because I saw the energy when we first got on. You want this to work, right? I yeah, see it. I pick that freaking car up out of the mud and put it on a road with no mud and haul ass. That is specific, exact laser specific, perfect avatar, perfect elevator pitch, meeting professionals and helping each other get more referrals. But yeah, if you can tell other people about me other than that, thank you. And I'll let you know when this is up and hit me up anytime you want on Facebook or email. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for your time, Rick. Thank you. Take care. Take bye care. Bye. See you there. Bye-bye. Look forward to the videos. You got it. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care.